Hi everyone, Macho here from Recording Studio 9 and thanks for joining me again today. Today I will be talking about um, a, an issue, an acoustic issue that you might have in your home studio as well, just like I did, and how to resolve it as cheap as possible. In my home studio, I've got a lot of acoustic treatment that I have. I've got acoustic panels everywhere. You can see behind me over there as well. I've got a few at the front, pretty much everywhere. I've got uh, clouds, which is on my ceiling, that reduces a lot of reflections in the room by absorbing some of the um, main frequencies in, in the room. It balanced everything out. Everything was fine, so whenever I actually did any recording and mixing, all my sounds, music sounded really nice from my speakers because remember um, I have my speakers at low level about 70 to 75 dB so I mix uh, everything at low level but every now and then I do turn it up to hear how it actually sounds when the speakers are really pushing um, in this room and I go to the back of the room and, he and walk around and see how it actually sounds to my ears. I realized lately that there is this some ringing and resonance in the room whenever I turn the music up and I wasn't sure what it was from. Then it triggered. Only recently, back in December uh, 2017, I actually bought an acoustic drum and it sits at the back. And then I realized that whenever I turn the music up a little bit louder than normal, uh, the drums start resonating or well, whenever I have a vocalist here got louder voice uh, start resonating and then that resonant sound was actually coming through the microphone tearing my hair out to find out what it was so eventually I find out it was from the drums I got some uh, drum mutes on there you know to mute the sound of resonance a bit that didn't help I've got a big blanket on there, a thick blanket, you might say, um, to actually get rid of that resonance, but still there. So today I'm going to show you how I'm going to get rid of it cheaply. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to build those sort of panels, but much thicker and higher than actually be standing. I think they are called gobos. So... That's what I'm going to build. Now those gobos or acoustic panels, they're just basically a, a wooden frame and they have acoustic insulation in them. I'm going to use sound screen uh, left over from building my studio, but uh, you can use rock wool or any type of sound absorption material um, in that frame. I did uh, go to the hardware shop and trying to find, you know, wood wide enough a thin wire to make frame. The room being small, there's a lot of low frequency that I need to take care of because that's what making the drums resonate. Low frequencies. Panels that sort of size, they take care of sort of uh, mid and high mid frequencies. So you really need something about that thick um, standing like gobos in front of it to stop that. Trying to go to the hardware shop and buy the wood uh, it was getting quite expensive. Next thing I remembered, oh, how about a bookcase? I can buy a bookcase, not put the shelves in, and then fill the bookcase with my sound screen uh, material. And then cover it up with the same uh, material on top to stop any of the, the sound screen materials or rock wool falling out or the small dust of them coming out. That will stop it, but it will be nice and thick enough. Bookcases, again, they were expensive, except I had to go to IKEA and buy a bookshelf for $35 each. And right down there, you can actually see I have two of them. For $70, I will be building two bookcases and then filling them with sunscreen installation. And I've got two gobos. Then I'll be able to use it. It will be behind me where I normally sit. So right behind me. And that will stop any sound coming, going and vibrating or resonating the drums. Or turn them around when I'm recording drums. That will be my drum room. If you look this way. I could actually have them right behind here. At the back of the vocalist. 
So when I'm recording a microphone, right behind me, those gobos would sit and then that will make my vocal boot. That's the model of the bookcase from IKEA, Gersby. It actually didn't take me much long to get the frame of the bookcase going. Uh, maybe, I don't know, five minutes? If that. And it's pretty much assembled. This is it. And that's one of them. I'm just going to build the second one as well. But I won't be putting the back of the bookcase yet. Because what I want to do is once I put the insulation in and then cover it, I'll be stapling it at the back and then putting the back panel um, in there, uh, you know, to stop the back bit. Because the back bit um, is not going to be material, but it's just going to be the actual bookcase back panel. But it will uh, nicely get screwed in there or nailed in there so that uh, it nicely covers the ends of the uh, cloth material covering it. Now, why did I choose this specific uh, bookcase from IKEA? Not only of the price, that it was only $35, which is quite a good price for a bookcase anyway, but because of its dimensions and the sizes, the width of it is 60 centimeters or 600 millimeters, which is the exact width of my sound screen insulation bat. It is about 1.8 meters high, so someone standing behind it if I'm making it as a vocal boot, it covers nice height. And it's about 230 millimeters thick as well. That means I'd be able to put three layers of my sound screen. My sound screen is about 70, 75 uh, millimeters thick. So that will cover three layers of it. Well now I have actually built two of those uh, gobo panels which you see right uh, behind me. Uh, I hope now th they're right behind me and you can actually capture the difference of the audio from the previous one. So I can certainly tell that it's much drier sound, there's not much reverberation because that those things behind me is actually cutting it off. So let me zoom out. As you can see, they are right behind me. And 
they definitely do stop any of the room reverberation coming and being captured onto the microphone. They should make sure make it more quieter as well. Yeah, so there they are. And here they are being used as a vocal boot. So it's my microphone there and right behind them capturing all of the room reflections are my gobos. And here I am inside my vocal boot and it does really feel nice and tight and dry and quiet as well. And here's an example of how they're going to be used as a drum room. So if I need drier drums, they'll I don't have my drum set up yet, but they'll be sitting like that to actually make the drum room smaller and much drier sound. And here is an example of uh, creating um, a back wall to absorb the lower frequencies, of course, to a certain degree. And they are facing against the speakers. So this way, the sound from the speakers will directly hit the absorbers and be absorbed and rest reflection coming to a position where I'm sitting and mixing. Well, I still don't know what the word gobo stands for. If you do, please comment below because I've got no clue, but that's what they are. They're basically acoustic panels that allows you to move around and they are wide, uh, sort of thick enough to be able to have enough insulation in there to absorb lower frequencies. So usually the panels uh, on the walls, they're about 75 millimeters thick. So they usually will get uh, mid and high mid frequencies, where these ones will actually get mid and low mid frequencies. And um, they definitely stop room reverberation. And um, of course, now that I've got them, I'll, uh, as I set up for mixing, I will do room calibration as well and then see how much difference will actually make to my mixing, whether I'll be able to hear a difference or be able to have better judgment of my mixing as I'm doing mixing, because obviously they reduce the room effect. As with my disclaimer at the beginning of this video, I'm not an acoustic engineer, but certainly practically uh, it does make a difference. And if this was helpful for you, uh, how you can actually build something uh, for really cheap at less than a quarter the price of what you can buy from the market commercially, then um, make sure you give me the thumbs up. And if you have any comments, feel free to comment below and I'm more than happy to answer them for you as much as I can. Until then, as always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music. Cheerio, guys.